Welcome back. In the last video, what we did was to try to understand how traditionally uh, people deal with these complex systems. And we have seen that there were two different approaches, traditional approaches. The one was the siloed approach. The other was the data-driven approach. What I'm going to talk about now is what Cosmo brought um, to the table, which is the system-driven approach, the system-driven models. So what is the idea behind that? The idea is to say, okay, we will have the opportunity to model the system and the different parts of the systems as they are in the real life. And more than that, we are going to be able to describe, to model the interconnections between the different parts of the system because what we know and what I learned from 20 years in academia is the behavior of the system is as much as in, inside the interaction as it is in the subsystems themselves. So that's what we bring there and that, that's what we call system-driven modeling, system-driven models. We put the systems, we put the interactions. And this is extremely powerful. How can we do that? Well, we can do that because we bring to the, to, to the market two very deep innovations. The first one is a language, a proprietary language that allows to describe a complex system, that allows to describe the different parts, the coupling, as complex as they are. And the second one is now we have the tool with the language and what we do is we add a methodology. This is completely new and what is fantastic is that it allows to describe, to model, any complex system. With this tool, I can model the hand, I can model the epidemic, I can model whatever system I want to consider. I can model a city, and this is what we have done. By the way, this idea that the same, the same tool, the same language can be used for modeling every different complex system is what led me when I started to work on complex systems in academia. That was one of the big ideas, and this is the, the idea that is developed inside the Cosmo company. So great, now we have a fantastic model that allows to describe the system as it is in real life, no matter how complex it is. So what do I want to do now? Well, I'm going to use this to run what we call simulations, to be able to predict now the behavior of the system in the future. And that's what we're going to discuss in the next video. Stay tuned.